Hi everyone, it's Stepan. I'll continue the coverage of round 12 of the candidates with a very instructive Roy Lopez uh, in which Grishchuk was playing white against Levan Aronia. Grishchuk was in a good situation on the scoreboard after round 11. He had 6 points before this round, which is only a point behind Caruana who was in first place. And Aronian had unfortunately had the worst possible tournament so far and he was at only 3.5 after the first 11 games which is far less than what he was expected to get, especially since he was one of the pre-tournament favorites, so definitely not a good performance by, by the Armenian. Alexander kicked off with pawn to e4 in this game, e5, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, Grishu goes for the royal Lopez, we have a6, the uh, tempo gaining move of the bishop, bishop a4, knight to f6, castles, bishop e7, this is all this is all common theory so far, and Grishuk plays the first uh, imprecise but still most commonly played move, despite uh, that the best moves are either knight to c3, d3, or bishop takes knight on c6. Uh, he played still the most common move, rook to e1. Uh, b5, chasing the bishop away, bishop to b3, castles, d3, d6, this is all still theory, still several hundreds or even thousand, thousands of games played from this position on Grandmaster level, and it's almost completely equal, both sides have something to play for, and White has several choices here. By far the most often played move with more than a thousand games is, is c3 for White, repairing the d4 push, and uh, to save the bishop if need be by uh, putting it to c2. And uh, White has several uh, several other choices here, uh, even uh, g4, uh, or, sorry, h3 preventing some pieces from coming to g4, queen to e2 developing, or knight to c3. But here Grishuk went for bishop to d2, a move which was only played once before. So bishop to d2. And this was probably his preparation and the way conf to confuse Levon. And uh, Levon now reacts with a move which makes sense, but it's too slow. He moves his king to h8 uh, to to get away from the from the pin on the on the on the f7 pawn. But there was there was more useful moves, perhaps bishop to g4 or rook to e8 or even the aggressive knight to d4. But if he wanted to uh, get the bishop away from pinning the king, then perhaps a good plan. Uh, was to somehow get to play knight to a5, which is now impossible because of the d2 bishop, but in time perhaps moving the king was a bit too slow. h3 now by uh, Grishchuk, preventing bishop to g4 or knight to g4, knight to d7, and this maneuver is common in the Royal Lopez, but in this exact position it's too much of a time waste for not enough compensation, and Grishchuk now stands better. The plan of uh, first moving the king to h8 and now knight to d7 is of course to push with f5 and to open up the king side for black pieces, but it was a bit too slow, I think. Uh, Alexander reacts with knight to c3, finally developing his queen side, knight to a5, now that the bishop is blocked he can attack the, he can attack the b3 bishop and take it, but I still think king to h8 was a mistake, perhaps he could have used the tempo for something more useful and now he could have played knight to a5 anyway. And the bishop has actually served his purpose already, he made Aronian waste the tempo on king, uh, king h8, so yeah. Knight to d5, not caring about the bishop, knight takes b3, a takes b3, of course, taking towards the center, taking with the c pawn would be just horrible and probably immediately losing for, for white positionally. Bishop to b7, attacking the knight, c4, and defending once more so that he can take with c takes d5 and not ruining, ruining his pawn structure. And in this position f5 immediately by Aronian. And now imagine if uh, the c4 knight wasn't defended, he could have taken it with bishop takes uh, d5 and then e takes d5 and f5 wouldn't have uh, an opponent in the center, he could just push uh, e4 immediately after that. And with f5 he's striking on the king, king side and Grishuk plays a good restraining move. He plays bishop to a5 ignoring f5 and with this move preventing Aronian from evicting the knight with c6 as it's, uh, the c pawn is pinned to the queen, uh, rook to c8, rook to c1, b takes c4 by Aronian, b takes c4, now f takes c, d takes c, and now Grishuk has a superior position practically and positionally, black is almost <laughs> lost already actually, but it's not that easy to prove. And all of white's pieces are on absolutely optimal squares and black has to sort out both of his bishops, the dark squared one has no squares uh, to go to, which are any good, and uh, if, if it moves it could be captured by the knight. And the white bishop is 
just he would have to give itself up to to become better actually the best move is to trade it for the d5 knight but that would give give Grishchuk a strong central st central structure with d5 and d4 so uh, we have knight to c5 here Aronian has a good knight that has to be said but the problem is that b4 seems to evict it pretty easily and Grishchuk prepares that first with bishop to, to c3 not leaving his bishop stranded after b4 now after queen to e8 b4 and the knight has to move, it goes to e6, bishop to d2, now uh, defending the key f4 square. So if Aronian plays knight to f4, then knight takes f4, and Aronian would have to retake with the e pawn and not to lose the exchange, which would, which would be horrible, because he would give up all of his pawn tension in the center and his activity. c6, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, bishop to e3, and it seems that Aronian got through the worse, and Grishuk didn't really material, material on his advantage, and there were better ways to continue. I mean, he's still slightly slightly better here, but nothing to write home about. Uh, c5, b takes c, and here of course taking with the d pawn loses e5, so he has to take with the knight. And even if e5 pawn was defended, it would still be better to take with the knight, I think, because the the way he has that way he has pressure on the on the weak c7 pawn later on with the rook. Knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes, knight to d2. A good move by Grishchuk. Uh, at first, just seeming to solidify his position and making the bishop on b7 look pretty useless for now. But there are greater plans for this knight. Uh, bishop to c8. Aronian immediately transfers the, the bad bishop to a much more active diagonal and knight f1. And this was a high class maneuver by, by Alexander and Black has one main weakness in his position and that's the d5 square, which is a perfect out, out was for the knight. And now Grishuk reveals the true purpose of knight to d2. With knight to f1 he is planning to transfer the knight to e3 and then to d5 possibly. And the best thing is that there isn't too much Aronian can do about it. Uh, he continues with bishop to e6. Knight to e3, rook to c6, queen to e4, a4, attacking the rook and defending c4 for the third time. And Ronian puts more pressure and defends the rook with rook f to c8. We have rook to b1, h6, making luft, rook to b uh, to b8. And this is a tactical trade by Grishchuk. Uh, it's not losing a rook. If, uh, and if Ronian takes on b8, then just queen takes c6 and, uh, and the position is equal. But there is a good move Ronian can interpose. He takes on c4 first, uh, gaining a tempo on the queen, but now Alexander can take on, on c8 with check, rook takes c8, rook takes c8, and now queen takes a6, gaining the pawn, because black took the c4 pawn, and this is now equal material and a pretty boring middle game end game transition in which neither side can make much progress without the other player making a big mistake. So the game continues for a while with queen to c7, Rook to d1, rook d8, queen to d3, a lot of maneuvering now, queen c5, king h2, queen c7, try, both players are trying to find the chance to improve. And this is actually fun to watch because often in, in games I find myself thinking about creating a plan and I always think, oh, if, I don't know, Magnus Carlsen was playing this position, he would know exactly what to do, but this is a perfect example that even the top 10 players sometimes have no idea what they should be doing. And I mean, okay, a super computer, or an engine would find the plan and, and make some progress with both sides, actually. But for, but for humans, it's pretty hard to understand this position. So we have king to g1, queen to c5, rook to d2, queen c7, queen a3, queen e7, just maneuvering rook d1, king h7, queen to b4, queen to c7. I, I mean, uh, Aronian is trying something, but... After rook d3, king g8, there isn't really much going on here. Black can't ever push d5, which is the only break in the position, apart from a f4 by white, which is absurd and it would lose immediately. And yeah, all the pieces stand on optimal square, so this is looking more and more like a draw because neither side can really improve without making the position worse at the same time. Queen d2, queen to e7, king h2, I think they already thought about agreeing to, agreeing to a draw here. Queen to f8, king g1, queen e7, queen d1. A few more moves are, are played. After queen f8, now, now Grishuk is trying something, perhaps trying to maneuver the knight from g3 to h5 and some active square, but still that there, there is nothing he can achieve with that. And in this posi position they agreed to a draw. And it's not the most exciting Roy Lopez, but instructive when it comes to creating plans in these closed positions. 
and black went for his thematic f5 push and prepared with king h8 and white advanced with c4 and in the center and neither side made a mistake big enough or created a strong enough attacking plan in order to win unfortunately but with this draw Grishuk is now in excellent second place uh, with six and a half points after 12 rounds since Caruana lost in round 12 and he is now sharing first with Sergei Karyakin so Alexander stands a chance to win still because he is only half a point behind the leaders and poor Levon is at 4 out of 12, which is 33%. Unbelievably bad performance by the Armenian. And I hope he can at least win the two last games to pick himself up a bit and show that he is a good chess player after all. Okay, everyone. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon with more chess from the candidates. Cheers.